Hi everyone, my name is Brelias. I'm a 3D artist and director from Chile. My work specializes in surreal imagery with topics of nostalgia, human connection, nature and abandonment. In this series of tutorials, I'm going to walk you through my process, showing you how to achieve this piece using Blender. Now I'm in Blender. This is my startup file. I use it because it's optimized for a bit of everything. I will show you how to set it up right now. You can check what the camera is seeing. You can quickly make use of your asset library. You can organize the scene objects, check the properties for everything. You can manipulate the scene, tweak shader settings and UVs in case that's necessary. I will restore Blender to its default workspace. The first thing I will do is to hide the timeline. That's because I plan to do a still image, not an animation. I will leave the outliner and the properties as is. Then I will grab this corner of the viewport and split it into sections like so. In this one, I will select the asset browser. Here I will go to view, then cameras, and select active camera. And I will hide the toolbar on this view. Here I will enter the shader editor. I will divide this again and select the UV editor. And I will leave the bottom viewport like that. Here is where my library will appear when I start building one. You can go to preferences and set a path for your library where your blend files are. Then it's just marking objects as assets and they will start appearing here. I will go to the scene tab in the properties panel and change the resolution to 1080 and 1350 because that's the best ratio for the platform I mainly use, which is Instagram. I will change the render engine from EV to Cycles. I will leave the sampling settings as default. I will set the minimum light bounces to 1 because it helps rendering transparent objects. I usually leave this like that. Sometimes I increase the glossy bounces to 5 or more depending on the materials on my scene. I will also increase the transparency and transmission bounces if I'm rendering a lot of transparent planes stacked together because at low bounces it turns them black. I usually leave clamping at 0. It can be really helpful to reduce noise if your clamping is set to 110, but if you're losing a lot of the noise work, like me, it's better to leave it at zero so there's more information for the, the noiser to use. I set the volume step rate to something like 50, because the volumes in my scenes don't have much quality. It's usually a homogeneous volume so it doesn't affect quality, but decreases render time considerably. I activate Simplify and set the viewport texture limit to 512, so it doesn't consume as much VRAM. Although that isn't important to me right now, thanks to NVIDIA, as they kindly provided me with a 3090 and some beautiful 24 gigs of VRAM. Either way, it's always good to have VRAM to spare. I only activate this render limit if I just can't render a scene. Normally, I set it to 2K as it doesn't affect the quality of my scenes that much. I won't touch the performance settings as it's not that necessary with this Blender build I'm using, which is K-Cycles. In color management, I have installed another set of view transform and looks called AGX. 
it does a better job at handling the color shift of bright light sources and overall looks a bit better than Filmic. I will move the color management tab to the top for easier access. Now select camera and I will go to viewport display and activate all this. I will enable the passport tool and increase its opacity so I can focus on what's inside the camera. And I will also activate all these composition guides so I have a better idea of how to compose everything. As for assets, I have the polygonic family of assets, like botanic or materialic, that give lots of nature stuff, which I love. I also have some collection of assets from big, medium, small, like the apocalypse one. or the medieval set. I also use Kitbash 3D packs along with some assets I have added myself. All those allow me to conceptualize and turn scenes alive really fast. The scatter add-on allows me to create particle systems with some of the plants I use. It's really configurable, complete, and allows you to optimize your particles so they don't destroy your performance. There's also the photographer add-on that allows me to change camera related stuff like changes focus distance, aperture, shutter speed, focal distance and more. You can also add stuff like custom bokeh and vignettes. And the main tool I use is K-Cycles, a modified blender build that adds faster rendering, a higher quality denoiser, and real-time compositing in the viewport. It helps getting faster results with better quality and more customizability. While also adding effects like bloom, glares, tone mapping and lens effect to the viewport. And my favorite tool, which is Ultra Lighting, a way to manage light groups and light linking from the properties panel. So if I want to isolate lights to see how they interact with the scene or change settings on lights, I can do it right here.
and while it's not really necessary, it helps a lot during the process. Having everything explained, we can proceed to work on the piece we brainstormed before. <laughs> 